sister was born a year ago. My sister was born a year ago. My sister was born a year ago. My sister was born a year ago. But it's like the day, 25 December, the day after my birthday. But you wrote your Hebrew right now? Oh, uh, long kiss. My mom is still sleeping. No, but she's late. I don't know. No, she's not late. 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 Why? Here. She's not late. Why? She's not late. It's like Jewish and not Jewish. She's not late. She's not late. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, today's share is Lily Nishmas Elazar ben Nissen and Pesa. He passed away in Holland on the 17th day of Elul this year, I guess. Yes, this year, just a few weeks ago. Thank you for being here, all of you, on time. I said the bracha downstairs. I think the milk is sour in the coffee. We don't want to take pleasure in it anyway. Okay. I think so. But not terribly sour. Okay. Hamabera, yes. Aya Atkins yeah. from California. Yes? You're from Chicago. Oh, from Chicago. <laughs> from Chicago. Rojo Hana Tahir. Yes. You're from California. Shoshana Chosid. Here. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Yes. Malka didn't make it yet. Rivka, Rivka Ram. Ah, uh, good. You gonna keep this as your seat, Rivka? No. Oh. I'm sitting on seat because. Uh huh. Where is her? What? Hannah Ruman. She she moves up. With the fam. It's her mom's birthday. She what? She went home. She went home. We'll be back. Okay. Batya from Montreal. Rojo. Rojo, where do you hail from? Long Island. Okay. Where in Long Island? Queens, Long Island. Mrs. Shapiro, no. Okay, that's it. A book. Thank you so much. I have your one, but I like to put on me. What? You're going to make yourself a coffee? Well, don't put milk in it. I'll be back. What? So why is it, we learned, why is it a person has to think that he's like a Russia? Why is it so important that a person should think that they are like, similar to a Russia? A Russia is a, a wicked person. 
A Russia is a wicked person. A tzaddik is a righteous person. We should always imitate the tzaddik. Try and be like him or like her. Why should we not want to be like a Russian? To think, why should we not want to think even that we're like a Russian? Because we, we want to be happy in serving Hashem. Yes, because if you think you're like a Russian, you'll be upset. You'll be upset. This is Malka. Let me take a guess. Malka is from Kiev. Yes. Yes? <laughs> And the second reason is <coughs> Well, that, that to, to, that's, it. that's why you're not allowed to think that you're wicked. Why must you think that you are wicked? Why is it important for a person to, why this, it says in the Mishnah, a person should always think that he or she is a wicked person. He, he needs to know that he has space to grow, to be right. better, yeah. That's one, one side of it. What's the other side of it? The other side of it is if you think, if you don't think that you're a wicked person, you will never recognize that you make a mistake. You will never see your own mistakes. You'll just think that you're righteous. And if everybody is telling you that you're righteous, well, why shouldn't you think? Why shouldn't you agree with them? Because you know the truth. You know who you really are. Same selfish person you always were. Just you're working, trying to be better. Okay, so to understand this, we, we saw that there were five divisions in, in, in the character of a Jewish person. Three general divisions and two subdivisions, total adds up to five. So here we go, we made this on the board. We're no strangers to love. What does that mean? We, we don't love strangers, but what does this mean? We're no strangers. When love comes along, we don't behave like a stranger. Okay, so the, the tzaddik is the righteous person. The Rasha is the wicked person. In the realm of the Tzaddik, we have two. We have the Tzaddik who has good and the Tzaddik who doesn't have good. And we have the Rasha who has good and the Rasha who does not have good. The Rasha who has good, this is the common complaint. How come I see people who are not religious people and have such a good life? They have a big house and five cars and servants and a house in the country and a cabana in Florida. And they go to Israel and to Europe every year. How, how can it be? And I know somebody's a tzaddik. Mom is such a righteous person. He, he, he has no food. He's a, his house is all falling apart. And even people don't appreciate him. And then we have the Benoni, the middle ground. So obviously, since the Benoni is a middle ground, we're going to discover the Benoni has connections with the Tzaddik. Part of him is like a Tzaddik, and part of him is like the Russian. So he, he mediates between them. That makes five divisions. So when we said he doesn't, have, when he has, it's not good. Here they translate in English as he suffers. 
And they, they go on to explain, in the material sense, that's to say, his house is boiling hot in the summer, he doesn't have air conditioning, and it's freezing in the winter because he's got holes. In the, in the, in the, in the walls? not in the walls, in the, uh, what do you call it? Insulation, cracks, there's cracks in the window, in the window frame. I know what that's about. And spiritually he suffers because he has not got rid of all the evil. Whenever he makes a mistake and does something wrong, uh, he feels very bad about it. He feels very, very bad about it. So he suffers. Like, let's say somebody offends him, says something offensive, and he's ready to shoot back at them a very sharp comment. And he holds it in. He doesn't say it. He doesn't say it. But he thought it, and he knew he, he knows he thought it. Where did that thought come from? That was not a good thought. That was an evil thought. That was a thought that was sent, that comment was sent to me by Hashem. Why was I angry at him for saying it? It's not his fault. It's not his fault Shem, Hashem made him his shliach to say this bad thing to me. And he's probably, and he's right. He's 100% right. So the, here's a tzaddik. He didn't do anything bad, but he feels bad. He suffers. Most of us wouldn't suffer at all from it. We'd think nothing of it. But the tzaddik is on a much higher level and he does think something about it and he's very careful with his own spiritual status and he's upset, so he suffers. Then we have a wicked man who has some good in him. On the one hand, he's wealthy, he leads a good life. On the other hand, sometimes he, he does mitzvahs. A wicked person can do a mitzvah. He's not wicked all the time. But if he's wicked even one time, he's wicked. Because a tzaddik never does a wicked thing. The question is, does a wicked person ever do a nice thing? Yes. Yes, 100%. If you have a person who's the upstanding pillar of the community, he's a pillar, a leader of the community, he's generous, his house is open, but he happens to be very arrogant. He has a big ego. His ego smells like an onion. <laughs> is he a tzaddik? No. Is that, does he have mitzvahs? Yeah. So he has a, he's, a, he's a, a wicked person, but he can have good. He prospers materially and spiritually, uh, he suffers. And there's a Benini. So now the Gemara begins to explain. Page 35. That's XXXI. No, V at the bottom. Who's going to read? Page 35. Second bold lines in type at the bottom. The Gemara explains in a loud voice, Rachel O'Connor. The Gemara explains. Louder, please. Louder. The Gemara explains. Oh, good, good. The righteous man who prospers is the consummate, literally complete side. Very good. You got that abbreviation on the fly, literally. Good for you. What did you just say? Who is the righteous person? The complete righteous person. Who is he? What is he? What makes him a complete tzaddik? The bottom. What makes him the complete tzaddik? It says he's the consummate. It means he's a tzaddik in every detail. Malka, what's the problem? You got the place? Yes, Malka. You got the place. Okay, so the completely righteous person means Rasha, but that's tzaddik, but toiv loy. He has toiv. Toiv means good. The tzaddik who has good means he's a tzaddik in everything, every detail. He always remembers to say a bracha. He always checks to see if the food is kosher. He always remembers to say a bracha afterwards. 
He gives tzedakah, a lot of tzedakah, not just a minimum, 9.999%. Still didn't give tzedakah. He's at 0.1, short of doing the mitzvah. He doesn't do the, doesn't they just give 10% tzedakah? He gives 30% tzedakah, 30% of what he earns. Okay, 20%, maybe more. He, he, everything he does, he does for the sake of other people to help them to do mitzvahs. Everything he does is with kindness and consideration and compassion. This is the consummate tzaddik. I told you yesterday, two days ago, I mentioned a person, a personality. We're going to hear a lot about him during the year. A very great person. His name was Friedman. He was a rebbe. He was a descendant of David the Melech. And he was the rebbe of the Rizha. Everyone is a town. Anybody know where Rizha is? You were there? Anybody there? No, I think it's in Ukraine. You were there? Yeah, in Rizha. Rabbi Yisrael of Rizha says he didn't blink his eyes. He didn't have a purpose. He didn't have a purpose to it in serving Hashem. Everything he did was with the thought of Hashem. There was a guy here in America. He came to America. He lived in the Lower East Side when that was the only place where Jews lived, the immigrants. What? It's, really it's what? In Poland. It's in Poland. Yes. Region. A good thing we have Rabbi Google here to help us out. <laughs> he knows all the answers. They called him the Hale of the He was a descendant of King David. Can you imagine? Would you like to meet a descendant of King David? Yeah. yeah. Isn't, isn't it amazing that we have in our midst people who are descendants of David the Melech? The Rebbe is a descendant of David the Melech. All the Rebbeim are. And he was also original. And they are a different breed because they are people who suffer for the Jewish people. They're concerned for the Jewish people. And that's why they often end up in jail. Isn't it interesting? A Rebbeim always end up in jail because they fight the government. <clears throat> But a king is devoted to the peak to his people. And the, the, very, very often, the descendants of Abed Melech, they think more about the Jewish people than about their, their own needs. That's what I've observed. That's what I have observed. Yes. When other people are thinking, how are they going to survive? The descendants of Abed Melech are thinking about how are the Jewish people going to survive? They don't have, they give up their personal life. Even if they're not Rebbe. If you say they're Rebbe, I can't understand that. We even see, I see an example, kingship is like that. Look at, look at the pictures that we see nowadays. Queen Elizabeth just passed away. I'm a Canadian, so she was my queen. <clears throat> and you see the pictures of her time and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. <laughs> Whatever she is doing, she's going to visit some institution. She's encouraging them. She's taking an interest in I mean, she had to do homework. Before she went, let's say she went to four or five institutions in a day, or three or four. She had to do homework. Before she went, she had to familiarize herself with the institution. What do they do? Who are its principal leaders? What are its achievements? And she had to go and encourage them to be even better. That's her function as a queen, as a, as a king. That's the function of a king. A real king, a good king, is someone who encourages the growth and the goodness and the moral righteousness of his nation. A wicked king just wants for himself horses and women, horses and wives. Therefore, the Torah advises a king not to have too many horses and not to have too many wives. 
not just to acquire wealth for his, for his own sake. So the righteous person, the tzaddik, <clears throat> who is perfect, means he's perfect in every single detail, every movement he makes. That's why you see so many hundreds and thousands of pictures of the Rebbe, and they're all interesting. They're nearly all interesting. Whereas if a person went through your day with you and took pictures of you during your day, not every picture would be interesting. Some of the pictures would be downright embarrassing. Some of them would be just of no interest. You'd be... <clears throat> take a look. Take a look at one of the famous paintings that's made of the Rebbe by um, Rabbi Lou Tiefenbrun, who lived of Ashala Hashem. He lived in England. And in his spare time at night, he used to paint. And he loved to paint the Rebbe. He loved to paint the Rebbe. And one of the, he painted from pictures. There were photographs. One of the pictures of the Rebbe, it's a very beautiful picture, is the Rebbe sitting at his table. That table, by the way, that beautiful table with all the inlaid woods was made by a husband, a farmer. Who had a farm in New Jersey named Lipsker. Cons, superette, you know, the con store where you can buy your food. It, he ran that store after he left New Jersey. River brought him back from New Jersey after he was, had him running a farm in New Jersey. Then he started that store and then it was bought over by, by Khan, Farrell Khan. So the Rebbe is sitting at this table that he manufactured. He made it in his garage. Beautiful, beautiful table. He made the ark, you know, instead of the 70 ark with all that beautiful inlaid wood. He made it. He made it, he made it for the Rebbe. <laughs> tissues do a better job than your sleep. Uh, you have tissues? Yeah, there is. I think there is any Anyway, the Rebbe is sitting there and he's sitting there like this. And he's looking at a book. What is the Rebbe doing? Anybody who ever daven mincha with the Rebbe, that, that's what Rebbe is listening to the repetition of the silent prayer, the repetition of the Amida. Go to shul when the chazan is repeating the silent prayer. Take a look around. See, is anybody looking in their siddur? Very rare. People just don't do it. But we saw the Rebbe do it every single day. The Rebbe didn't always daven with the, with the congregation. Shachras, he did, he used to daven by himself. And then Mincha and Meir, he would daven together with the Hasidim. And then in the last years, after the Rebbe was uh, Nifter, the Rebbe began to daven with the, with the Hasidim downstairs. So, but we, anybody who daven mincha with the with the Rebbe would see the Rebbe sitting there following the chazan in the repetition of Shmona Esra every single time. Not just sometimes, every single time. So that is an instruction in how we should behave in shul. Okay, does anybody, did anybody take the hint? Very few people do it. Everybody... When it comes time, they look around. Some people talk to their friends, which is actually forbidden. It's a transgression. You're not allowed to talk in shul. Huh. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not only wouldn't talk, he didn't look around either. When did the Rebbe look around? At the end of the davening, the Rebbe would pick up his sitter, and he would look around, and he would see everybody there. And somebody once complained to the Rebbe that he wanted to have Yechidus, he couldn't get Yechidus. The Rebbe said, every time I look around, that's Yechidus. Because the Rebbe looks into the soul and into the heart and into the mind of every person in a split second. There are many, many stories of people before they open their mouth to tell the Rebbe what they need, the Rebbe already answered their, their request. Because the Rebbe... He doesn't read your mind. He knows what's in your mind. He knows who you are. 
He knows what baggage you come with, what are the things that you messed up, what are the things that need to be fixed, not just now, but even in previous incarnations when you were here in this world before. Okay, so the tzaddik who has good is good in every single detail. And the tzaddik who has bad, that's the language of the Tanya. The tzaddik who has bad. The word for bad is, who knows? What's the word for bad? Ra. Ra. Sa, ra sh, so tzaddik ra, lo, he has ra. Remember the story yesterday about Stalin, Yemach Shemai? Who ra, he's bad. Bad person. Deserves the worst. Who ra. So the tzaddik who has bad, what does that mean? It says here, he calls him the suffers and says he's imperfect. So therefore, this is a tzaddik who is, has material suffering. That is to say, he has no money. And therefore, he doesn't have warm clothes for the winter and doesn't have air conditioning for the summer. And the suffering that he has, turn over the page, 36. What's 36, Hanavera? X, 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 what? V, V, I. V, I. Like V, I, P. <laughs> Cleansing. <laughs> So this suffering is a cleansing for him. It cleanses his soul while he is alive in a body. And then when he comes to the world above, the world of future, he doesn't, any little things he did wrong, he's already paid for them with suffering in this world. And this is what it says in the, in the Gemara, in the Talmud. And it asks the question there. The age-old question, see, it's nothing new. Why is it we have righteous people who suffer? And the Talmud says, because Hashem is the, is the perfect accountant. He knows everything that you've done, everything that you've said, everything that you've thought, every mitzvah that you've done. And if you didn't do a mitzvah perfectly, as well as you could have done, that's considered a sin. For instance, it's a mitzvah to give tzedakah 10%. Some people want to do more. They make it a mitzvah to give 15% of their earnings to tzedakah or 20%. And a person is very wealthy, very, very wealthy. He doesn't need all that money for himself. He can give 20% of tzedakah and still live a very, very comfortable life. So he could give more than 20% tzedakah. There were Hasidim, there were Hasidim, who when they would give 20% tzedakah, they'd come home with their earnings. They would give their wife 20% of they, what they earned and said, that's for the expenses of the house. The rest is for charity. Why? Yes. There was a person, a very close uh, person, very close to the Rebbe, very wonderful person, happens to be, he was a big mouth. He was a loud mouth, but he was funny and he was good. And he used to collect money in 770, whenever, whenever there was a gathering, we'd have a big bucket and we'd go around and he would walk on the benches, on the backs of the benches. He'd, and he would collect money, he would, he would, he would say, say what he would announce very loud, reach into your pockets and take out a dollar and give me the rest. And, and all that money that people would give him would go to helping poor people. And he had, he had diabetes, so he had problems with his feet and he wore these big clunky shoes to protect his feet. And with these big clunky shoes, he would walk across on the Switch. tops of the benches. You can see him. Okay. 
So all this suffering is a cleansing of the body, a cleansing of the soul while he's in the body. So when, when a person suffers, he's a righteous person, he suffers down here, he goes upstairs. So you could say about this person, he gave 25% tzedakah of all his income, but he could have given 35 or 40, it wouldn't have made a big difference. So for him, since he didn't live up to his potential goodness, when you don't live up to your potential, that's a lacking is also considered a sin. A sin is not just doing something evil. The word sin also applies to anybody who doesn't live up to their potential. Let's say a person learned 12 chapters of Tanya by heart, but could have learned 24. Didn't live up to his potential. So he, he should have devoted more time to learning, could have devoted more time to learning, and didn't. Maybe he got interested, was interested in Israeli politics. Can't help it, it's interesting. Maybe he was interested in the war in Ukraine. Who's gonna win? Who's, wow, well, how is it all gonna work itself out? It's very frightening when you think about it. It's very frightening. It's all predicted in the in, 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 in medieval medrash. So there's gonna be a war between two kings, an Arab king, another king, and the one king is gonna lose, and then he's gonna come back and destroy the world. And everybody's gonna be terrified. And they're going to be running this way and that way. It's able to what's happening. Is this, is this, are you going to destroy the world? And, and, and the Medrash says, the Messiah, Mashiach, is going to announce from the roof of the base of Migdash in the name of Hashem, do not be afraid, my children. Everything I'm doing is only for your sake. The time for Mashiach has arrived. That's what's going on in the world today. Okay, so have a wonderful Shabbos. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to end the class. I'm going to start ending the class just a few minutes early because there's a minion just across the road. And for me, to, I need an extra minute or two to get there on time and not miss the minion. So please, I ask your forgiveness, Mirosh. And oh, so this is what I was just finishing up. What does it say in the in the in the in the in the Talmud in the Gemara about fasting? It says, "What about the person? He's a a, a wicked person. Everybody knows he's a wicked, but selfish, self-centered person. Doesn't give money to charity. You know, he just leads a good life. Belongs to the country club and belongs to the card club and belongs to the golf club and you know, travels all over the world." has his own private golf course, his own private this, his own private that. And why does he have a good and the righteous person suffers? And he leads such a good life. Says me. So the Talmud says, because when his life is over after 120 years, and he goes before the heavenly court, and they say, Mister, you have a big debt up here. We gave you so many blessings, and you didn't use them in the right way. He says, but I did mitzvahs. Yeah, well, we paid you for those. You were paid very generously. You were rewarded for all the good things you did. All the good things you did were, were you received reward for them. He says, well, can't I get any reward now? He says, no, no, we gave you all the reward. So that's, that's how the Gemara explains that the wicked person who does good deeds, he's a good, he's a good, he does do good deeds, but he's a wicked person, and from heaven they pay him back for his good deeds while he's here. And when he goes up there, he doesn't have these good deeds anymore. They were all paid for. Whereas the righteous person had no blessings here, he had a very difficult life, and when he goes upstairs, all he has 
He, all he takes with him is all, he can't take his gold, he can't take his silver, he can't take his bank accounts, but he can take his Torah and he can take his mitzvahs. And out of there they have a lot of reward waiting for him. Hi. A good a good revenge to your This year stands top shin is gonna be pay gimel. Pay gimel is pay is 80, gimel is three. 5783 in Hebrew, Shin Pei Gimel stands for three words. Simcha. You know what Simcha Parnassa? is? Yeah. Simcha Pei Gimel. Part of together. Simcha can not be stopped. Simcha breaks through all barriers. I love you. I love Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. You're shaping up to be a very good class. <laughs> Milk is sour. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> it won't harm me. <laughs> okay. So there you, you want the tea? Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. No. Have a wonderful shoppers, girl. Thank you. 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 Lessons for you and your for family, for everybody.